I remember that first night, and it was very sweet and dear. And I came on, and I was quite nervous. One is at these chat shows. Yeah. And I came on, and I met this extremely nervous gentleman with a lot of beading on his upper lip. <laughs> Who was it? Russell Hardy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> slightly taller and slightly more Irish than Russell oh, I see. Hardy. Yes, yes. Well, look, you've been very quiet, haven't you? It's motherhood, isn't it? It's motherhood, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't seen as much as you as we would have liked. No, because... Well, uh, having a daughter, having a child, I wish I'd had more, but alas, I could only manage one. Uh, I decided that I'd try and balance my life so that I'd give the domestic side a bit of a chance as well as the professional side. It's uh, quite hard. And has it worked out that way? Yes, it has. I mean, touching a lot of wood. Are you, are you, are you, are you mind the false flowers. Now, are you a dedicated mother? Are you, I mean, yes, I'm pretty which, dedicated. Is the, which is the priority with you? Well, the, the priority... The art or the motherhood? Well, the, the motherhood, really, until, until she's about 11 or 12 and goes away to school, and then, and then I can uh, concentrate on the art, I think. You're going to send her off to school? Oh, yes, she's going away to school. Poor child. No, 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 she's going away to school because I don't want to be the heavy in the household. So you've got to do your prep and you've got to tidy You're your You're going room. to abrogate your responsibility Absolutely. to some cruel headmistress. Oh, right? yes, I'm going to do that. Yes, but I'm... I'm uh, but I'll she likes the idea of that. Loves it, loves it. She loves the idea of... Uh, midnight feasts and dormitories and things like you that. You haven't told her about the rotten times, have no, you? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> she knows now, doesn't she? Well, she's going to discover. Yes. Part of growing up. Yeah. Well, you'll miss her, of course, when she leaves. Oh, it'll be terrible. It'll be absolutely awful. A big hole in my life. And that's when I'll go to work seriously. And that's probably when I discover that... <laughs> Diana who? <laughs> yeah. Do you allow her to watch television? No. Uh, well, I, uh, t t certain things. Certain things I won't let her watch. Why not? Well, I disapprove of them. I've got terribly proper in my old age. Yeah, I really yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that because you don't want her to grow up like you? <laughs> <laughs> She's got meaner. No, no, no. She's got no. much more meaner. I mean, you don't... You want to protect her from all the things that... awful things that happened to you when you were younger. No, not the awful things that happened to me, but... I think there's so much on television that, that gives them a false idea of, of what's cooking. I mean, Dynasty, for example, it's not real. It's perfectly uh, entertaining and it's wonderful, but it's not real. I believe it. Oh, Terry, I'm sorry. <laughs> but she's only nine. I can understand that yes. you, you do restrict her. But how do you stop her watching what she wants to watch? I scream at her. Eyes on sandals when anything comes up on the screen that I disapprove of. Yeah. My, my daughter did, uh, takes the reverse view. She, she says to my wife, avert your eyes. Oh, how sweet. At moments like that. You see, she, feels, she feels that her mother doesn't I really know. understand what's going on. I know, but that's so sweet. It's when they, they start getting uh, uh, responsible for you. Yes. Very dear. Yeah. They think you wear idiots, really, don't they? Oh, yeah. And they, they think that children think that sex or anything like that never occurred to us. We don't know. And each generation, it's astonishing, each generation thinks it. Pardon? <laughs> Critical comment, really. <laughs> Each generation thinks it, it invented sex, doesn't it? It I thinks know. it invented any that we oldsters know nothing. I know. But you, you are remarkably well preserved for a woman of of your. Oh, Terry. Oh. Years. Uh, no, we're going to talk about age. Yeah, no, we're the no? same age, aren't we? <laughs> How old are you? Forty-eight. Yes, me too. When's your birthday? Uh, August. Uh, You're younger than I am. <laughs> not one much, month. though. Not one much. Month. And you've aged a great yeah, deal better than me. You honestly aged a great deal. No, better. you're talking rubbish and you're looking for compliments. No, I'm not. I'm, yes, I'm saying to you that really I can see very little change. Well, I'm jolly well going to have the jack up when the time comes. How about you? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, certainly. Yeah, well, well, all that stuff. <laughs> would, you, would you do that? Yes, of course I would. Like a shot. I mean, anything to avoid that awful moment when you look in the mirror in the morning and you can't bear what you're looking at. What about, what about getting the bum lifted and everything? Nothing I wouldn't get the it. bum lifted. Wouldn't you? No, I simply wouldn't. That, that's just going to have to hang there by <laughs> the hand in there. Uh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't get the boobs lifted either. Why not? Well, they don't need lifting, isn't that? No, it's swank. It's a real swank, but yeah. they don't. But the face, yes, I jolly well would. I mean, here and the eyes, the eyes and all that. Oh, yes. See, you've been hiding away in Scotland for a lot of the time. I, I hear tales of, of you beating for the, for the shooters and, yes. and fishing in the waves. I and fish. Oh, I'm such a fisherwoman. I love it. <laughs> I we talk it. about flies. Can we <laughs> talk about flies? <laughs> in the waders? In the waders, I do it. And what, yes. what have you caught? Have you caught anything? Oh, a any salmon. Significant? A swank. More swank. I've got a 23-pound salmon. What did you do? Jaws. What did you do? Stuff it and put it on the wall? No, I ate it. <laughs> <laughs> I 
funny, but still fits. The big fish are disgusting. <laughs> they are. It's a little one for the night. Oh, I've never thought of you as being a, no, you didn't a see. shooting and fishing lady. I tell you, it's happened to me late in life. I started learning about all sorts of other things late in life. And it's wonderful. I mean, I sincerely hope there are a lot more things I can learn as I go on. Mm. Do, you, do you bore your friends now? If you're no, I don't. Yet, I right? shut up about it. I don't talk about it at all. You've been talking about it now Only for the last couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I, you're about to return to the West End. Yes. Thank goodness. I am. It's a wonderful uh, play and a wonderful part. And my chum, Pat McNee, is opening the same week as I am. He is. Yes, he is. He's another well-preserved gentleman, isn't is he? Yes. I haven't seen him for such a long time. Since we had him on the show, well, well oh. I, for, I don't know, how long is it since you've seen him? Well, uh, it's about a year, but we keep ringing each other up and saying, do you know the lions yet? <laughs> oh, no, so we won't have dinner. We'll have dinner when we know the lions. Yeah. yeah. He's doing the big spectacular opening, isn't he? It's He's doing a great charity opening, and his is a whodunit, and mine is a why done it. and I get to, I get to have a, um, an affair with a younger man. So nice. It's one of the perks of getting be, being an older woman. <laughs> <laughs> did you run it in the country at all? Did you yes. try, try it out? Yes, we did. We tried it out in Bath. To the booze of the populace? Well, the booze of the populace. They flock to it, I'm happy to say. Oh, yeah. yeah. do, do you still, because like it or not, much of us, many of us, watched you in our formative years as an Avenger and all that black letter and everything, and Ooh. with a great deal of affection. Do you look back on that with affection, or do you think it was a kind of retrograde step? To no, I don't at all. I'm deeply grateful, because thanks to the Avengers, I suddenly became famous all over the world. And if I'd stuck to the theatre, it would have taken me years of touring to get that sort of exposure. But did it narrow, then, the, the scope that people employed you? Oh, um, yes, that was a bit boring, because they kept on offering me parts of sort of women. Uh, you know, I had a gun in my hand all the time and was rather sort of um, aggressive. And I'm not deeply aggressive, you know that. No, you, if, if anything, you're, you're probably a little too the other way, too gentle. Mm. Do, you, do, you wear any <laughs> do you wear any leather or wet suits nowadays? <laughs> Certainly not suitable for uh, Rachel. Well, it's uh, no. The Women's Institute is out front as well. It is, yes. <laughs> yes. Just before we started, they all sung Jerusalem. I which is a lovely, it. Wonderful. A lovely start. Yeah. But you, you don't get into to wetsuits, leather suits. Well, I had to get into a wetsuit once um, for this. I did a, a, a documentary for the Scottish Television. And they wanted me to, to um, fling myself backwards over a boat and with tanks on my back, sink down into the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, so I had to practice with a wetsuit. And I, they brought me this wetsuit into this hotel room and I put it on. I don't know if you've ever tried a wetsuit. It's not part of your bag, is it, Drake? No. Anyway, it's the most impossible thing to put on because it's tight and it's rubber. Oh dear, well, I'm going to have so many letters after I'm only, this anyway. I'm not made of wood, you know. Uh, Go on. And I put it on, and I, I suddenly realized it was three sizes too small, and I had it on, and there was no way I could move in this thing. I was doubled up, and the telephone was over there, and I couldn't even walk because the crutch was down here. <laughs> and I thought, I'm stuck. And you know when you get panicked, you get all hot and sweaty, and oh! Uh, <laughs> and I was in it for three quarters of an hour, edging my way across this hotel room, trying to reach the telephone, which I finally reached, and said, somebody come and get me out. I didn't have a stitch on underneath the wetsuit either. Anybody would have helped you. Very nice. Anybody. <laughs> I didn't want any. You've got to douse yourself with talcum powder. That's what they, they tell me, but on. yes, I didn't, you I didn't, didn't bother. do that. Do you, do you do, can you be bought? Do you do, do you do television? commercials would you do television commercials? no i i i did one once and i i learned my lesson um i was advertising champagne for i think it was germany not famous but champagne is it <laughs> <laughs> anyway i i they they decided that i should be in a dolphin pool uh, swimming around and i would hold up this champagne glass and the dolphins would come up either side of me and you know, you know that noise they make <laughs> Well, it was a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. First of all, the dolphins, um, one swipe of their tail can break every bone in your body. So I didn't just have one, I had two dolphins. So instead of a sort of bright, smiling face, I was catatonic with nerves. <laughs> and the other thing is that the entire pool smelled of mackerel. I smelled of mackerel for a week. You know, I couldn't get it out of my hair, because they feed the fish yeah. all the time. That'll and teach you. Teach me to smell now, myself. Now, as a mature actress, um, how long will you intend to, to keep working on it? Oh, I hope till I drop, don't you think? Yes, I'm a very old bird. And you'll be playing, playing the nurse in Romeo and Juliet. I'll be playing the like nurse that. in Romeo, and yeah. hopefully somebody will write parts for sort of uh, sleepy <laughs> old women. Don't you think? It'll never happen. 
Diana Rigg, thank you. Oh, great pleasure.